having me here. It's really, it's great to be here. And, and thanks to everyone who was at my training yesterday. This will be the 20 minute version. So I'm just gonna talk really, really fast and do six hours of training in 20 minutes. Is that okay? Okay, good. Um, so as observers, uh, you may have looked at the uh, United States pres presidential election last year and thought that we on the Obama campaign had it really easy. Um, if you uh, Google Romney EU, for instance, the very first uh, suggested entry is Romney Europe gaffe. Uh, he came over here, he you know, didn't make a lot of friends, mit the twits, <laughs> total car crash, worse than Sarah Palin, Romney, sh hashtag Romney shambles, we liked that one. Um, oh yeah, and his, his aide, one of his uh, staffers, told a reporter to kiss my ass. Uh, but show some respect, obviously. So you may have seen this and assumed that we had a really easy time, that we would have no trouble um, winning the election. But our victory was truly never assured. Uh, you know, the, the money was lining up on the other side. The progressive base, our you know, core voters, were less enthusiastic. You know, it had um, been in 2008 a campaign of hope and change. And uh, you know, as you become president and reality sets in and a giant economic crisis hits, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a more, um, uh, there's a, a calming effect of the just extreme enthusiasm that there was in 2008. Um, and, you know, even though we were usually ahead in the polls, um, it was very close and, you know, usually within the margin of error. So, you know, if we look at the, the polling over the course of, you know, most of the campaign, you know, yes, we were ahead, um, but only by, you know, a point or two on average. Um, and, you know, sometimes uh, Romney's numbers would actually um, come up and, and slightly uh, go ahead of ours. Um, so how did we win? How did we actually make it happen? Um, well, we did it through massive numbers of field offices. Um, you know, there were, uh, you know, three times as many almost uh, field offices for the Obama campaign is for the Romney campaign. Um, and so uh, I found this actually online. Someone did a map of all of our offices in, Ohio, in the very important state of Ohio um, versus Romney's offices. And you can see we were just, you know, we were thick on the ground. We had people out there talking to people, talking to voters um, and mobilizing the base. Um, we had hundreds of staffers, paid staffers across the country. Um, and they were, uh, you know, organizing thousands and thousands of volunteers. Um, we also had invested in a huge amount of infrastructure. Um, we had a, a gigantic analytics department, um, a data, data department, technology. Um, we were, uh, our technology team put together um, really state-of-the-art uh, database integration technology. Um, there was new technology to target television ads. Um, and just a, a laundry list of other smaller programs um, and technological advances. Um, and plus we had you know, thousands of staffers across the country. Um, at uh, the peak, I think, um, in Chicago headquarters where I was working, there might have been 700 uh, people in the, in the office, um, and, and including 200 digital staffers. Uh, so we really had you know, quite a few uh, expenses um, you know, and, and to, even though it was obviously the right path to do all of these, uh, to undertake having a huge staff and, and all the new technology, it costs a lot of money. Um, uh, now, before I get into this money stuff, yes, $750 million is ridiculous. Um, uh, and it already, like, sounds like just way too much money to be spending on politics. Um, I'm going to leave that aside because the alternative was going to be President Romney. Um, we, you know, couldn't, we had, would have to do better than in 2008 um, to beat Romney and the super PACs, uh, which are these, you know, big organizations where a lot of um, untracked money goes uh, and those people were supporting Romney. Um, but fundraising was more difficult in 2012. Um, the president was less available for the, the sort of high dollar fundraisers um, where uh, you know, people could meet the president and donate a few thousand dollars. Um, we, you know, early in the campaign on the, in the digital side, we were noticing that the average gift was much lower. Um, they were giving less and less often. Um, and, you know, part of that, again, might have been the le less enthusiasm. Part of it was genuinely the economy. I mean, people had less money to give to politics. Um, so, you know, we were, uh, we had to be smarter. We knew that it wasn't just going to, we weren't going to be able to coast on hope and change. We had to um, optimize our operation as much as possible. 
Um, so we did that through a, a laser-like focus on data. We were always using evidence to drive decisions. And we had this culture of testing. You know, we were constantly looking for ways to improve our operations. And it, a lot of that involved um, checking our ego at the door. Uh, you know, assuming that we didn't always have the right answers, um, trying to come up with creative solutions, uh, throwing out um, old, old ways of doing things if, they, um, if the numbers just didn't add up. Um, and we had a lot of staff. As I said, we had 200 digital staffers um, at our peak. And uh, you know, it, it really helped to have all those different voices in the room um, creating all sorts of different content that we could test against each other. Um, so what kind of impact can testing have? Um, I think this is really important because people think that maybe it testing, you know, it, it's sort of nebulous, does it really matter? Um, but this is what we would do for every single national email. We would have uh, four or six different drafts, all different flavors on the message of the day. Um, and each one of those drafts would have three different subject lines. Um, and so we would end up with 12 or 18 different variations of every email. Um, we would send uh, each, we would take about 20% of our massive email list, break that 20% into smaller pieces and send those smaller pieces, you know, one of these uh, variations. We'd send it out, um, wait an hour, and then we'd see which one, which variation was doing best. Um, and that way we could send the very best variation um, to the list. And as you can see, you know, when we actually, when we send the winner, um, this particular email raised $3.7 million. Um, if we had just sent the average draft, if we had just had to sort of pick one at random, we'd expect about $2.1 million. Um, and if we uh, had sent the very worst draft, if we had happened to pick the very worst ver uh, version of this, of this email, we would have gotten uh, $2.2 .2 million less than if we had sent the best. Um, and we were bad at predicting the best. Um, you know, uh, Duane alluded to this, but we, we ran this thing called the email derby um, for about a month where uh, the, the email team, um, they had about 18 writers. Um, so they would, they would put in their guesses uh, about which draft and subject line would win. I had uh, my digital analytics team of about 15 analysts, and we would guess as well. And we were worse than chance at guessing what would win and what would lose. You know, we were, and, and the, we were people who did this for 15 hours a day, every day, and we were all very much up to date on the latest thing that had been winning and all, you know, all of the test results. And so the fact that we couldn't even guess, you know, which of these versions would win or lose um, just made it all the more clear that we needed to keep testing. We needed to just try lots of different things and let our audience tell us what they found the most compelling, what they found uh, the most resonant. Um, but sometimes it wasn't big, you know, $2 million improvements. Sometimes it was little improvements that then add up to millions of dollars. So, you know, in this case, we had, uh, we tested different ways of doing our web page, our donate page uh, from, you know, one giant form to more of a sequential donate where you, you know, enter a little bit of information in each tab and it just kind of moves you along the process. Um, and that improvement was a modest 5%. But that modest 5%, uh, you know, if we, I, I forget exactly when we implemented this, but, you know, several months before the end of the campaign. So 5% adds up to millions and millions of dollars over the course of those months. Um, so testing is not all about the big win. Sometimes it's about a lot of little wins that add up. Um, testing is also about, uh, you know, admitting that you don't always have the right answers. Um, and, and understanding that your gut instinct is often wrong. Um, you know, I can't tell you the number of times that I put together an experiment thinking I had a brilliant idea, um, and then having the numbers totally prove me wrong. Um, but, you know what, I had, I had enough humility to say, all right, that's fine, I don't mind being wrong, what can we learn from this? Maybe we should do the opposite of whatever I thought was gonna work, and we'll test that, and you know, a lot of times that would lead to uh, pretty useful discoveries. Um, oh yeah, so I just told you about the email derby, how we're uh, usually often wrong. Um, again, if, you, uh, if your experts can't even predict what's going to win, um, it kind of means you need to do more testing. Um, so a few, I'll just pre present a few of our sort of key findings, um, or some of our strongest findings. One of the uh, experiments we did was, you know, how much, how much email should we send? And we basically found that sending more email just leads to more money. 
Um, you know, people may tell you uh, that they get too much email. Um, even your friends and family uh, who are signed up for your organization's email list will say, "Ugh, you guys just send too much email. It's really annoying." Um, but uh, that's not what people actually uh, do. Uh, you have to listen to their behavior um, more than what they actually tell you to your face. Um, so, you know, we we did a, a an experiment over the course of uh, several weeks and basically found that. Um, you know, we, we got more unsubscribes as we sent more email, but it didn't spiral out of control. Um, it wasn't as if sending twice as much email led to four times as many unsubscribes. Um, and our unsubscribe rate was pretty low. It, you know, I, I think people sort of over, overblow the, um, the importance of unsubscribes. You know, some people are just going to leave your list. It just happens. Um, and, you know, the result of this experiment, um, this was uh, something that we did uh, late in the summer of 2012, uh, and with you know a couple months left on the campaign, and being able to implement that policy of just sending more email probably led to 20 or 30 million dollars more for the campaign. Um, this was one of the experiments that probably led to the single biggest um, improvement. Um, another uh, experiment we did is uh, you know again um, this was one where I was just wrong. Uh, <laughs> I thought it would be better to make our emails look prettier, um, but uh, it. That failed. Um, so I thought, OK, well, what if we make our emails uglier, or at least plainer? Um, so we, we decided to add ugly yellow highlighting. So this is what this email used to look like. Then we added um, just this really gross uh, yellow highlighting to certain parts that we wanted to draw people's eye to. Um, and that won. Uh, <laughs> so you know, we learned something. Um, but on the other hand, it lost its novelty at some point. Um, and it was a good reminder that even as you uh, do testing and you figure out what wins, um, it's not going to win forever. Digital is a very um, shifting medium, uh, you know, and, and uh, the things that um, are best practices now may not be in a few months. Uh, another experiment we ran that worked really well was um, uh, referencing people's past behavior. Now, I, as I said, um, you know, we did all these draft tests, subject tests for every email, and usually um, we found that you know, the um, demographics, uh, people, the, across the board, people would prefer the same draft. And it was actually kind of heartening that you know, it wasn't as if you had to say one thing to, to one group and a completely different thing to another group. People kind of liked the same messages. But we found that we could make small tweaks um, and get better results for specific groups. So um, for instance, we sent out an email um, to uh, people who had donated recently. This was in August, I think, and this is people who had donated in the um, three weeks before. Um, and, uh, you know, one, one half of this group, we just sent the regular email that we were sending to everyone, you know, uh, will you donate? And then the other group, we, we added a little extra sentence that was personal to them. And we said, you stepped up recently to help out, um, but we all need to dig a little deeper. We acknowledged their recent donation. Um, and this, uh, adding this sentence doubled the donation rate for that group. Um, and, uh, it, you know, when we repeated this type of experiment several times, and it wasn't always a, a doubling. I mean, that was a pretty strong effect. Um, but we had similar uh, results where if you, um, you don't have to write a whole different email um, or a whole different, uh, you know, social media message or, or whatever, it, uh, the message that resonates for everyone is still good. You can just change it just a little bit um, based on people's uh, expressed behavior. Um, and then finally, you know, one of the this is a major technolo technological innovation um, that we sort of verified through testing uh, worked really well. Is um, you know we introduced this quick donate system where it's kind of like Amazon one click where you save your credit card information um, after you've made a donation, uh, and then that after that we are able to send you. Uh, special links um, that let you uh, donate with just one click, just by clicking on it, and then you're done. You don't have to go enter in your information. You don't even have to be on, uh, on the web page, although it lands you on a thank you page. Um, and this was just, uh, I mean, phenomenally better at getting people to convert. Uh, I mean, really just very strong results there. And so that was a, a, a technology that I think is probably going to become more prevalent. Um, I think it's already being offered by some uh, you know, some platforms that you might be working with. Um, but I think in the next couple of years, you'll see that become really prevalent. So we raised over half a billion dollars online, um, just the digital department. 
Uh, and you know, the average gift was, was $54. Um, and so you know, this, was a, this was a pretty big deal because we had those super PACs uh, of people that were able to give millions of dollars at a time um, on the other side. Uh, and the fact that we were able to raise this much money from grassroots supporters uh, was how we paid for all of the other things on the campaign that helped us win. You know, I don't want to say that the digital department did everything. The digital department wasn't, you know, uh, the only thing that won the campaign for Obama. But uh, we certainly helped pay for the campaign, um, and that was pretty important too. Um, we also, as a digital department, you know, we did, uh, we recruited volunteers, we publicized events and rallies, we would send um, messages to people to tell their friends in battleground states uh, to remember to go vote, remember to vote early if that was available in their state. Um, so there was a lot of uh, mobilization that we did on the digital department as well. I don't want to diminish that. Um, but also, yeah, did I mention raising half a billion dollars? Um, <laughs> you know, that, that, was, that was pretty fun too. Um, so, you know, I, I think that probably the testing aspect of uh, our program was responsible for between 100 and 200 million of that half a, half a billion dollars. Um, I think that's actually even possibly a little conservative, especially if you, if you count all the technologies like Quick Donate that we developed. Um, and so, you know, I know that, uh, <laughs> you know, not every organization can be this massive machine that we had on the Obama campaign, but I hope what you'll take away is that testing really, really makes a difference. Um, you know, we, we were really big, uh, but um, even, you know, small, um, even small groups can, uh, can do some amount of testing. This is what we did on my digital analytics team. Um, you know, a lot of our, our uh, charge was to run experiments and provide data, but also just manage the data, you know, um, try to keep things in, uh, we had SQL databases and, you know, uh, we had people that could do uh, massive SQL queries and Python and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, and so some of it is just about investing in collecting your data. Um, now, one thing I think is important uh, to remember is that when you do all this testing, um, it does require content. So even though, you know, I of course think uh, you know, it's important to hire lots of analysts. Um, you know, we did have a lot of writers as well. And as I said, having those different voices was help, part of what helped the testing work. Uh, you know, instead of just having uh, six drafts that vary only by a couple of words, we would try to make the drafts, you know, different. Not diametrically opposed, but different. Because um, we never knew what was going to win. Um, so the data helped us win. I mean, it, it helped us raise the money. It helped us um, target voters. I mean, you know, not, ju not just in the digital department, but, uh, you know, we had a big micro-targeting um, operation. And, uh, you know, I, I think that to the extent you can, um, being data-driven is, is a really smart way, uh, you know, to, to improve and improve quickly. Um, big groups of people can accomplish a lot. Uh, we, we were pretty proud of how we did. Um, but you don't have to have a huge staff to be able to run the testing program. Um, you know, any piece of email, any, any email list can be split in two pieces. Um, you can train people that you already have on staff. Um, you know, I was really heartened uh, that the uh, email team, um, you know, who are, they're writers, um, but by the end of the campaign, we had become so, uh, they had become so well versed in testing and understanding, you know, the numbers that uh, they were very savvy as well about how to do testing. So it doesn't ha you don't have to have a stats degree um, to, to enact some of this testing. Um, and foster a culture of testing. Just make it, a, you, you want to make it um, the default that you will do some testing uh, and that you will base your, base your evidence on, uh, base your decisions on evidence rather than just uh, gut instinct. Um, and again, a small list can be split in two, and it becomes actually pretty fun to just uh, test, test out your ideas. And, you know, sometimes you're wrong, but sometimes you're right. That's, that's more fun. Well, I'll be around, so um, I'll see you guys around the conference. Thanks. <laughs>